Hello everyone, welcome back here to Canning Farms and in today's video we have a very strange one and I am in fact trying to make a worm farm out of an IBC tank. Yes, I did not misspeak, I'm going to make a worm farm. So look, uh, this video was going to be, uh, the first bit of the video was just going to be me making it or trying to make it uh, and then in the second bit then we'll fill it up with stuff and um, I'll, I'll talk about why I'm actually trying this as a bit of an experiment. But So if you haven't already, please hit the like button, hit the subscribe button if you want to see how this turns out. Uh, it all just helps the channel or whatever grow. Um, so yeah, we get stuck into this. So this IBC tank has been hanging around the farm now for years, doing nothing. Um, I was going to try and use it for rain harvesting. You can see another one there holding up the diesel tank. But I'm going to get a proper rain harvesting system at some, re some stage, so I'm not going to be using this. So to make the worm farm, what I'm hoping to do is basically to cut these bars around here, open up these support straps here, take out the white section, and I'll turn this into my lid. And uh, then I have to cut the white section then around here and basically then it will slide down inside the other section of the other remaining white bit and create a sump at the bottom for moisture uh, which will allow out the top of the bottom. I uh, have to paint this a dark colour and I'm also lining it with this uh, geomaterial here, weed barrier. So it will keep the worms in where they're supposed to be, uh, keep the compost in where it's supposed to be and it will allow the moisture to work its way out the bottom. So before I start cutting, we're going to have to wash out this uh, white section of the IBC tank because this came from my Uncle Michal's. And my Uncle Michal is a bit of a character and this thing has probably been across the border a few times with anything from green diesel to weapon grades uranium. You just wouldn't know what I mean, try anything. So, we get anyway, get these supports off and get this out. Okay, so that is it cut up, so now we just have to wash it out. Okay, so the next thing I have to do is see that uh, sort of lump there. I'll have to cut a semicircle out of here just so that I can slide down in on top of it. Okay, so that's the top slid in there now. So basically you can see in here then that it has created a sump where what's called the vermi juice will collect. So. I'll talk a bit more about that, but what I'm going to do is just drill a few holes in the top of this. It's going to go down the sides anyway, into that well, but just drill a few holes, let some air up in through it and collect more juice. Okay, so that is our lining in. So it looks a bit like a redneck jacuzzi at the minute. But uh, this is going to be basically the basis. So we're going to start with um, putting our worms down here with our first bit of compost. And then we're just going to be sort of building it up. Um, so there's probably two foot, two or three foot of a depth there. So um, yeah, it should be a good home for them there now. So I'll make a lid as well for this to go across the top, just because the worms don't like light so next thing i'm going to do is just i'm going to make a few uh, bit of a stand over these few pallets so i'll put two on their ends and one on top and i'll put the the ibc tank worm farm up on top of that so uh, it's easier to get the liquid out of it so i'm just going to use some of these brackets and um, i do pick these up in little whenever they're in they're awful handy they come with corner ones as well so I'm going to use them just to put all these things together, all these pallets, tie them all together. And then what I'll do then is I'll brace it across with timbers just so it supports the weight and she doesn't go wonky on me. Next thing you want to do is just paint the sides of your bin a dark colour. So I just went with black uh, spray paint, paint, whatever you have lying around, just a dark colour because you want to minimise the amount of light 
that's going through. Obviously, this is going to stop most of it, obviously, but uh, just to be on the safe side, just paint it dark color, black, green, gray, whatever, just to block out some of the sunlight. So for the lid, I just cut off the top section there, as you can see, of the IBC tank. I'm reattaching one of the straining bars there, just so the, the tap hole I'm going to put over the top doesn't sag. And then these bits here, I just left on, so I can bend them down like that. And voila, handle. One on the side. Voila, French, voila. Je, je vive. And now that is the basic worm bin made. So I just left these handles on so we can open it up. So next thing is put it back in the cage and put it on the stand. The reason why I'm making a worm farm is to produce a thing called a uh, vermi juice or worm lichate, which is basically boils down to its worm pee. So, um, because I created the sump on the bottom at the tap here, um, so as the worms eat the food in the bin, uh, their, their pee or their extract will basically come down into the sump and I can take it out the bottom then and um, you dilute that uh, maybe 5 to 10 to 1 in water and you can use that as an organic fertilizer. But uh, more than likely you will get feck all of that. So um, the main thing that I'm looking to produce out of this bin is a thing called compost tea, uh, vermi tea, whatever. So basically in the bin here, I'm hoping that the worms will eat whatever food I'm putting in. So it can be like straw, household scraps, leaves, small bit of uh, grass clippings. You'd be putting in cardboard, paper, things like that. The worms will all eat that and produce um, a highly... A uh, valuable compost basically they'll poo creating worm castings and um, that'll be mixed in with all the organic matter in it you'll be hoping then as well that along with that there'll be microbes bacteria and fungus growing in that then the vermi compost uh, tea what is that that is where you take probably about 30 or 40 kilos of that you get your other ibc tank yeah put it in there for a day or two you aerate it so i'll be making my own aeration thing later on down the line and you put a small bit of molasses in it and you're basically boosting that microbial life that's in it you spray that out on the out on the ground and that'll help um that'll help basically the life that's in the soil i'm commercially farming here i'm using a lot of fertilizers i'm not for organic farming i'm not trying to change into an organic farm by any means but there is some things i think that if they work they work which is great and i'm going to experiment with different things I'm putting out chemical fertilizer constantly. In my eyes, that's not contributing anything to the microbial life or the, the living things that's in the soil. That's just chemicals going out and blowing grass out of the ground, which is great, but you're very dependent on it. And when you put that out, I think that it has a detriment where it's killing some of the life that's in the soil. So the likes of this is just putting it back into it. Again, I'm under no means or under no illusions that I'm going to replace my fertilizer cost with something like this but if it helps it's worth it i've made this out of an old ibc tank that i had i have some tram from when we were doing the garden last year the screws the nuts the bolts the paint we all had that lying around so if this works it's great if it doesn't sure cost nothing i have been collecting worms over the last while so you can see them here these are compost and worms or red wrigglers and different things so they don't like the light so i'll put them back in that bucket where i've been keeping them so you can buy compost and worms and different things but i'm from cavan and i've never paid full price rent and i might damn go and paying money for worms so i'm going to show you where i've been getting them over the last while Oh, so this is where i've been getting the worms lately so under these bits of plastic here and if you dig in this sort of stuff that's here these are compost and worms so it's very simple to get them um, anywhere where they're in the top level of your soil you'll find these compost and worms so uh, the type of worms that go in here are compost and worms so they're red wigglers things like that they are not your earthworms so don't go digging in the garden or digging up soil and getting them out 
they only live in leaf litter and the likes of that whole dung heaps, things like that. They're the type of worms that you need to be using in something like this. So for some bedding, I'll be using some of this old straw. Uh, this straw counts as a carbon source in your feed. So basically your feed needs to be around a 30, 25 to 30 to one ratio between browns, which are the likes of your straw, leaf litters, uh, small branches, wood chips, to a nitrogen source, which would be grass clippings, dung, chicken litter, things like that. So stuff like this is absolutely ideal, broken down straw and things. I'll put in some fresh straw as well into it. This is the kind of mix that I'm putting them into. So I have compost, straw, sawdust, um, cardboard, paper, different things like that. I'll throw in my household waste in, like peelings. Um, the only thing you can't really put in here is no dairy products, um, no meat really, or citrus. I don't like citrus fruits, those compost and worms. But you can see there, it's a nice, diverse. Uh, and don't be afraid to put little sticks and things in there as well, because you want to keep this aerated. You don't want it to go in, and uh, you want to keep it aerobic. So, the likes of these little twigs and stuff. Don't be afraid to throw them in as well. One other ingredient I want to put in here, and we'll go down to the woods and get that. I'm down here in the wood, underneath the massive beech tree. These big, huge beech trees on the farm. And as you can see, the bluebells are out. And the reason I'm down here is because I'm after some of this. Some of this leaf mould here that hasn't been disturbed for years. So, this leaf mould will contain microbes, funguses, natural decomposers um, that are working on this leaf mould all the time. So I want to introduce into the, this into the bin to really turbocharge it. So, a book of this mixed in should do the trick. So, so this is what you want this living material here, this decaying organic matter, with loads of microbes and funguses in there. So we throw that into the bin. So that's ingredient. Now it's the worms. Added them in there now. So you see here, look, loads of them in here. So I let them work away and break all this sort of stuff down and uh, they'll be happy enough in there and hopefully they'll be producing lychee by in, over the next couple of months. So I'll just let them work away in there so I'm sure to get a good mix of sort of big ones, small ones, juveniles, every sort. So the way you kind of know if they need feeding then is as this as this top layer drops, you will not feed them. Um, but I'll put the lid on here now and leave them alone. And I'll just give it a bit of a wetting before I close it up. You need to keep it, keep the soil moist, not wet, but moist. They like, they breathe through their skin so they can't be flooded out of it. But they do need, they do need uh, a bit of moisture as well to survive. So, oh, them lads are happy out. Right, so we put the lid on and leave them alone. Hope you enjoyed this video, a bit of an odd one. Um, hopefully, along with me, you're going to learn a few things about vermiculture. Um, so yeah, we're just going to close this up, leave these alone. So again, if you like the video, like and subscribe and share. Look, we'll see you in the next one.